Hi friends, as you know, for making a construction like, say for example, a hospital, a huge complex or similar things, a blueprint is required, right? Similarly, for the building of our body, its intricate machinery and its meticulous working, we also require a blueprint. What is the blueprint then? It contains all the information for the working of your cells and don't you forget, cells are the building blocks of an organism. Whether it's a simple unicellular organism or huge and complex multicellular organisms, all have the building blocks of cells. Just imagine 50 trillion cells in our body, each having its own DNA of 2 meter if stretched end to end. That is a whooping 100 trillion meters of DNA. So this much DNA can stretch up to the sun and back not once but 600 times. DNA is the genetic material of all organisms except for a few exceptions like the RNA viruses. All organisms have DNA to store their information and for their functioning. It contains information for the survival, development and reproduction of organisms. Now, where is this blueprint found? DNA is present in a more condensed form called chromosomes inside the nucleus in advanced organisms called eukaryotes. While simple organisms like bacteria have their DNA in the nucleoid. This is a diffuse region where the chances of finding the genetic material that is DNA are very high. Now, let's see the structure of DNA. DNA is deoxyribonucleic acid. This is a polymer made up of long nucleotide chains. It is a double helix where two strands are intertwined with each other forming this kind of beautiful twisted ladder shape. The nucleotides are made up of nitrogen bases, sugars and phosphate groups. Since we have carbon atoms in sugar as well as in nitrogen bases, we will write 1 prime and 2 prime and 3 prime etc. This is to differentiate the sugar's carbon with the bases carbon atoms. The sugar and phosphate bind together to form the backbone of DNA which are anti-parallel. Before that, we need to understand the binding of nucleotides. It is due to the formation of phosphodiester bonds. Here, the 3' prime carbon of the sugar molecule binds to the 5' prime end of the next sugar molecule. This bonding goes on in both the strands as per the requirement. Finally, at this end, 5' prime phosphate is free, right? And here, we have 3' prime OH which is free. Hence, this is the 5' prime end and this one, yes, you guessed it right. It is the 3' prime end. Remember, the other strand of this DNA, double helix, runs in the opposite direction, forming an anti-parallel arrangement to this one. Meaning, if this one goes from 5' prime to 3', prime, this one will go from, yes, 3' prime to 5'. Prime. How are these two strands kept together? This is due to many weak hydrogen bonds present between the nitrogen bases. Remember, there are four bases in DNA, adenine, guanine, thymine and cytosine. Adenine and thymine pair with two hydrogen bonds while the other pair is of guanine and cytosine. These are linking with three hydrogen bonds. So, in normal conditions, we have AT and GC base pair. Base pairs name because A pairs with T and G pairs with C. This different sequence and arrangement of DNA base pairs is the reason 
for the diverse organisms found on earth and even for the diversity and uniqueness we see in our species now let's have a quiz i will give you a strand of dna and you tell me the sequence of the other strand shall we start here it is so the sequence is 5 prime a t g c c g c a t g 3 prime what's the other strand's sequence you may pause the video and quickly write down your answer on a paper or simply comment it yes the answer is 3 prime t a c g g c g t a 5 prime how did you get it this is because of the anti parallel nature of dna and this is because hello we just said a t and g c base pairs so easy right let's explore the wide arena of dna functions and roles in further videos stay tuned